Hey there YouTube, Wolfie here with another video. Now this is for uh, changing an ignition switch on an 05 caravan, but I'll go through the components of the ignition system and basically how they work. Not in full detail, if you want that you'll have to look it up in the service manual. But uh, this uh, 05 caravan comes with a SCREAM system, that's S-K-R-E-E-M. The SCREAM module is right here underneath where the key go in. There's your ignition lock cylinder. And then here's a screen module here on the underside of the steering column. I've already moved the top and bottom half shells. I'll show you that how to do that momentarily. And the screen module has this plastic housing that goes around and makes a Hall effect sensor around the key lock cylinder. So when you install the key, like so, it picks up on the chip inside of here and you can't use an unauthorized key. And you can use up to eight keys if you really felt uh, rich and wanted to have keys for everyone in the house. But it will not work with an unauthorized key. So you turn, put the key into the lock cylinder and the tumblers inside match the cutaways on the keys. That allows you to turn the lock cylinder, but the chip inside on the circuit board of your um, remote key fob will activate the screen, mod the screen module here and allow the, uh, it will tell the body control computer and the PCM that uh, you're using an authorized key and therefore the ignition switch which is being this is the ignition switch here it mounts on the back here the ignition switch is which is being turned by the actuator which connects through to the lock cylinder on this side turns the actual mechanical component the ignition switch here which is this unit and that's what tells this the signal sends the signal from here through to the uh, ignition and the starter and if you if you were just to remove this ignition switch and put a screwdriver there and turn it it would start run for two seconds and stall out because the fuel pump would be shut off or the fuel injectors would be shut off so that's basically how the screen system the alarm system uh, security system works on this vehicle so now to remove the top and bottom half shells there's three Phillips screws this is the uh, top shell or the top shell here the, the uh, shifter rods holes go on this side and once you remove the three screws from the bottom side here the top top half you just get a flat screwdriver in here and just pry this apart on this side pry it apart on that side and then remove the upper and lower half shells and then you can remove this kick plate here there's one Phillips screw here on the bottom another Phillips screw on the bottom over here and it just snaps across snaps away at the top that's enough you don't have to remove the whole thing over there and you'll disconnect the battery. Make sure the ignition's off. Disconnect the battery. Just one terminal's fine. Leave it off for two minutes because you're dealing with airbag plugins. Anything, anytime you see yellow plugins, be very, very careful because if you uh, dis, if you uh, arm your airbags, you'll have a, you'll have a nice explosion in your face. So I'm not responsible for your own ineptitude. You got to understand how to do all this. And and uh, but I'm going to give you the basics here and just proceed with caution. Um, once you've gotten the uh, battery disconnected you can uh, disconnect this plug in here you remove you push the lock tab down on your ignition switch which is on the ignition switch or not the switch but yeah the ignition switch on the side of the steering column you remove this down pinch the the lock retainer at the back and then remove the plug in at the back and there'll be one little tiny t10 tamper fruit proof torque screw which is right here to remove in this hole and once that's removed, you don't just yank on this and pull it away. You have a thin, fragile plastic piece through the actuator here, which comes from the key lock cylinder on the other side. And then the aluminum portion, which matches the shape inside the ignition switch right there. And um, so there's two lock tabs. You can see them here. There's a plastic lock tab there on that side and one on this side. So before you go yanking on the ignition switch to pull it away, from the steering actuator, the column actuator, make sure you get a needle, uh, just like an O-ring pick like this. It doesn't have to be ri ridiculously sharp. I, this one's actually quite dull. Um, to get inside of here and give it a little push while you're pulling gently. And once that, once that tab is released, the sharp edge will release there. You flip it around to the other side and give that a little push and then it comes free really easily and you won't risk breaking these tabs, which are a whole nother um, expense if you do break them. So once you've got your old ignition switch out, you can put your new ignition switch on. Don't plug it in yet. I just had it here so it wouldn't fall down. And uh, 
then you can very carefully push, pull this tab back with one hand and guide this in carefully, lining it up, lining up these two lock tabs on here and snap it into position, put the screw in and then plug in your plug-in, relock your lock tab, make sure the key's still out and then plug in your battery or connect your battery again and you're good to go. The only reason we're changing the ignition switch on this vehicle is because I've already gone through everything else. Uh, ignition coil, it's an intermittent stop. It's not a very common problem with this vehicle, but I have encountered it on some older caravans, but this one just randomly will stop. And I've been driving it for quite some time trying to rule out issues. And uh, this is the last item on the list to change because it has not broken down reliably for me. So that's it in a nutshell. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a like and uh, any questions, uh, comments, add them below and we'll see you in the next video.